today on The Freezes. Darian and I are taking a few days to relax in one of our favorite state parks because we're just coming back from 10 days in Iowa, spending most of our time catching up with family. And yes, we did take our rig for the trip, so it was a very long haul. some very exciting news to share with you but we need to wait till the time is right on an upcoming episode that will be out very soon today's episode features a colorado state park that we love and a second with no camping fee that blew us away check out this sunrise this morning we were at our second location during the eclipse and you'll want to stick around for what the drone actually picked up when i attempted to film it and maybe you can help me identify what exactly it is but that's at the end so don't miss it and let's jump right into today's episode all right we're fresh back from our trip to iowa our big maintenance trip but it turned out to be a lot of great fun too but now we're back in colorado you want to show them around babe we are back in pueblo lake pueblo never thought we'd see this place in another couple years Lake Pueblo is great. The Colorado State Park System, you do have to buy into it. 10 bucks a day per car. 10 bucks a day, so if you plan on doing anything more than eight days, it's worth getting a pass because the pass is like 80 bucks. Yeah. But we love Lake Pueblo. For $36 per night, your campsite will have electric only. You'll have a fire pit, a level slab, a picnic table, and this really cool wind block shade structure by each table. And it does get windy out here, so it does come in handy. You will not have water at your site, but they do have many fill station spigots throughout the campgrounds, and if you're lucky enough, you can reach one to fill your tank from your spot. The park in general is enormous, along with the lake for which the park is named. Lake Pueblo has 60 miles of shoreline. The park itself is 10,000 acres, two full service marinas, fishing, hiking, biking, and a beach for swimming. We're kind of tucked in this cove, so we're out of the wind, but it's, it's so windy today. But yeah, we're just having a great time. We're on the bikes, we're about five miles in. There's 30 miles of trails here. The Lake Pueblo trail system is enormous. Let's get you some of this right here. It is all around the reservoir and so big. We are taking advantage of that. Still on some of the bike paths here. We're on Conduit Loop Trail, I believe, but look at this, this is great. Hello. Look at that fantastic view. Darren and I are here in the first week of October for the second time, and there's a couple reasons for that. One is we love shoulder seasons for national parks, but the same is true for the state level. The second reason is that the shoulder season in this park is very special, and that is because of the tarantulas. We are actually back right now in at the same time. We had the tarantulas last year. So I'm just sitting here on my computer and I just noticed that we have a friend. I did not know they were this close to camp. Oh my. So we're really looking forward to oh, getting some of that too. Fish. Um, Lake Pueblo is so clear. We found this really cool, actually a really cool little place where we get out of board, uh, but it's, it's kind of so chilly and, and chilly. chilly. Look at this thing. This is amazing. I wasn't sure we were gonna see one. It's huge. You guys, this is what the full-time, all-time life is all about. Tarantulas migrate to southeastern Colorado in late August to mate. So between September and October, you're likely to see a male out strutting the desert floor looking for ladies. Spiders are considered something we seek out, but seeing these guys up close is a real treat, and we would recommend it highly. The best time to find them is on days that are warm and preferably not too windy. They'll be active in the late afternoon, but the ideal time to find them is in the hour right before sunset and look in less populated areas. And then while we're out tarantula hunting, the boy is, look how good he's doing. He's just a good boy. He's wet because I've got some swimming. But he don't like a spiders. Wow. Lake Pueblo is awesome, right? If you're planning a visit, you should have a blast. But you know us. We're always scouting for the next best place to add to the freestone. 
So, while we have Johnny parked, we did some tow-free scouting west of here to set up closer to Utah. And what we found could be Colorado's best kept secret. Guys, we're out scoping some BLM here in Colorado. Darian found this on the fly. It is crucial to have more than one system. How perfect is that? So now I get a ride with Brian, but look at this. We get to climb up an elevation going over 8,700, but where we're going, we get to drop back down a little bit. Thank goodness. We're still testing it out, but it is fun. It adds a lot of cool metrics to your trip. We were left thinking, did we just find a Colorado hidden gym? So the next morning, we had to explore the grounds even more to find out. Good morning. We got some cows in the yard. Surrounded by mountains, you also share the area with open range cattle, horse ranches, and the small town of Deweese is on the other side of the lake. Let's call Lake Deweese South Central Colorado. Located one hour west of Pueblo on Highway 96, tucked right between the San Gre de Cristo and wet mountain ranges. This combination will make for views that you shouldn't forget anytime soon. We stayed long enough to try a few spots around the lake. There's also some camping in this wooden patch near the dam. It's slightly elevated and away from the water. The reservoir is supposed to be stocked with some serious fish species, even salmon and muskie. This lake is too gorgeous to just stay at one spot, so we moved across the lake for a different view of the mountains. So we just got to our second location where we think that we're going to be moving Johnny to. Um, there's Brian. He's walking back to go get the truck. Look at how cool it is out here. But anyways, we were just parked. You can see there's a camper there. We were just parked right over there, um, a little bit over from those rock piles. Gorgeous area, but we wanted, as you can see, the lake has a really awesome reflection. And on this side, we will get those mountains. Johnny sure does look good with those mountains in the background there. One car family now. just reorganized the two nights ago. I'm not quite sure how this stuff is gonna ride, so let's take a look together. Ah, not too bad. That goes there. That is gonna go there, I think. You know what? This didn't ride so great because Brian didn't put the pan back where it was supposed to. But let's see how the other cabinet did. Hey! Pretty good. You're navigating around the reservoir, go very slow and watch for those washouts and the ruts. So as you can see, this winter storm that's over the great sand dunes is trying to get over the Sangre de Cristo, but it can't quite get to us, thank God. So what we've done here to combat this cold weather is we put in this reflective bubble insulation, and what I have directly behind that is about a half inch of insulation that you would say put outside your house because we're constantly chasing 75 degree weather which inevitably puts us in 45 degree uh, temperatures overnight 
it adds us extra insulation and keeps the furnace from kicking on quite so often. This is how you know it's hunting season in Colorado. Three huge bucks. Any of those hunters that have been circling the Dewey's Reservoir would love to have in their sights. These guys know exactly where to hang out. Check out this sunrise this morning. Good morning from Dewey's Reservoir. It's the morning of the eclipse. We stayed overnight trying to get our new video uploaded and that didn't work. So we kind of stuck it out here in the cold. It's only 23 degrees this morning and uh, it's freezing. Good morning, honey. And I woke up this morning. Number one, our propane went out. It was 46 degrees this morning in our rig. Number two, Google Chrome kicked me out at 30% of the upload. So the whole night, we could have gotten into better weather and better position for the eclipse, but uh, when some lose some again. Are they doing anything? Yeah, the mountains look great too. I'll talk like this so y'all can see it. This is the coldest we've ever had uh, Johnny in. Uh, poor Johnny. We did our water trick last night and uh, we just got to get out of here. We're going to do the eclipse here just because we're here. We'll try to capture it, but I don't know if we can. We're going to try to trick with some of my drone filters and see if we can get uh, like a shot of the eclipse for you guys. Anyway, it is so cold and uh, we're gonna go back inside and drink some coffee. I'm gonna start the generator here in a little bit because when we hit the road, I'll, I'll wanna be at 100% because we're gonna try and chew up a bunch of pavement and get far out west, close to the Utah border so that we can get out of this cold. Did you show them the frost on the ground? Oh, they can see it. Look at it, it's so cold. Sergey, come on. We weren't able to secure glasses to view the eclipse, so I decided to slap the highest ND filter I had on my drone, point it at the sun, and see what happened. It turns out you can't actually see the eclipse here somehow, or the shadow of the eclipse, but don't ask me how that works. Nothing else is really usable in my opinion. I was about to trash the footage, and then something caught my eye, right there, a white orb of light. I use arrows to try and point them out during the clip, but they move at all kinds of speeds, so you have to pay attention. In my own research, I can't find any other clips like this on the internet or anything conclusive to tell me what they are. So I thought it would be a great idea to raise the question here. What do you think they are? Don't forget to weigh in in the comments below. So here's the clip and don't forget to look close. Uh, we're wrapping up our stay here. A few weeks ago, I accidentally ran over our weather station. <laughs> what happened then is that I've lost all sense of what the weather activity is overnight. Um, it has ended up getting a little cold on us, especially last night, supposedly got down to 27. So we immediately started looking for a warmer climate. We're looking at some hip camps. We have some BLM ideas. We got some options to look at. It's gonna be sad to leave this place. I mean, look how gorgeous uh, Lake Deweese is. This whole place is so special. I can't wait to come back. We've seen some confusing information online about Lake Deweese camping. Nothing is clearly posted as you enter the area, nor is there any signage after entering. So we emailed Colorado Parks and Wildlife to clear up any confusion regarding the camping fees, 
stay limits, and regulations. Here's what they had to say. The camping limits are 14 days in a 45 day period. They also go on to explain that there's no camping fee, that you need to have a hunting or fishing license, or the new Colorado State Wildlife Area Pass to access the property. In Colorado, this is how most of these areas operate, so if you're planning on spending a lot of time in the state, it is worth getting the $80 annual pass. Look at how cool this spot is. This spot is free, found by accident, and can be found by you and anyone else. This is boondocking. This is no water, no power, no sewer. There are potted toilets. But if you come out here, you better bring your own water, and you better bring your own energy if you need it. If you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.